Hello and welcome to my explanation on how to set up a Space Engineers server, private server or dedicated server, whichever one you want to use it for. So there are a couple things we're going to need in order to actually set up the server. We are either going to need a burner Steam account or your own private Steam account, whichever one you feel safe with. And you're going to need a router with at least some functionality when it comes down to port forwarding. A lot of the time, routers will say port forwarding outright, which you could just use the settings like that, or you get sometimes when it's like servers or a router like mine where it calls itself a virtual server. Cool. So, first things first is you are going to download Space Engineers using your Steam account. Go to the top here, search INGI or Engineer. The reason why we do this is besides just going to the top here and then enabling all the tools and shows us every single server we are just going to search engineer the reason why it's going to show us the actual space engineers game which will be helpful for me now and also the modding section and the actual dedicated server we are going to download the server which I've already done in the meantime I don't really use it that much on my main PC I tend to use a dedicated separate device so I'm not putting too much strain on my actual hardware I'm gaming on. You can use any old laptop pretty much. So at the moment, currently the oldest I'm using is an old i3 6th generation laptop with 12 gigs of RAM. They generally recommend, I think it's 6 to 10 gigs of RAM, if I'm not mistaken, depending on the amount of players you want and if you're modding. I currently am using i3 6th gen with 12 gigs and it seems to be doing the job. Uh, most of the time, even with this PC I'm using here in front of me, it will say it's going to be running the device in experimental mode. I haven't really figured out on why it's doing that, but I do see that most servers that currently run are doing experimental mode. I will show you how to enable that if necessary in your in-game scenario, so that it's easier to work with. Um, so every time you do it, it's not the same. Cool. So once you've actually downloaded and installed the, the software, one thing I will do just to make your life a little bit easier is you're going to go here, manage, we're going to explore our local files. We are then going to go dedicate server 64, scroll down to where we can have then the space engineers dedicated.exe, right click on it, go down to properties, compatibility and then just set this to run as administrator it's going to make life a lot easier in the meantime and in some cases you can also create a shortcut if you want to just have it there but I would recommend it because for what we're doing you only as I said you only have to do the Steam account once so we don't always want to go and open up Steam to go and just run the server so we're going to then create a shortcut go minimize this, minimize that, minimize that, go and grab the shortcut and paste it there so we can actually access it whenever we want. Cool. Once we've set all this up and you've got your route to open up in front of you and you actually have the port forwarding section in front of you, what you're going to do is you are going to open up your command prompt so you're going to hit Windows R, or if you're just going to hit Windows and type in CMD. Once you open a DAP, we're going to then search IP, so Windows button, CMD, we're going to open that as it is. We're going to then type in IP config. I'm not going to run it here because I never know if it's safe or not. So once you run it, you're going to see Ethernet adapter. I would hope you're running your server off of Ethernet as you will get less ping spikes and get better performance overall. We are then going to be looking at the IPv4 address. You can then grab that, copy it. On your router then you're going to then open up a new tab or a new option or in my case I just basically take my IP address, paste it in the IP option where it asks me it will then ask me for port numbers. This is going to be the important thing. When it asks you for your incoming and outgoing, we're going to use 27 0 
16. We're going to type it on both sides, incoming and outgoing, and we're going to set it up as UDP. I know some people tend to use it for the TCP and the UDP. I do both just to be safe, so I don't have any conflicts. You might need to also set up for your firewall if you need to do it. So if in most cases you would just type in firewall defender. We then go down to then allow an Apple feature. No, that's not the right one. We are going to change. So it's been a while. Alright, there we go. Advanced settings. Then we're going to go to inbound. We're going to say new rule. We're going to say port number. UDP. We're going to type in then 27016. Allow connection. We're going to say, let's say, space ing. And we're going to say UDP. Finish that for incoming. We're going to go outgoing. Set a new rule. It's then going to say port UDP 27016. Next, we're going to have to click allow the connection. And then we go next, next, then space ing. Now we're going to say out maybe. And then UDP. There we go finished. Now we've actually got our firewall set up when it comes down to the actual server. I'm going to delete those settings later because I'd prefer it to be running on the separate device I tend to use. And yeah, as I said on the router side, type in the ad. It's normally going to ask you for an IP address. Type in the IP address. It's going to ask you for the incoming outgoing. You use the 27016. You then set up for UDP and then you add that as your router so it will allow it to actually go through. It's going to differ from every single router. I'll see if I can find the link at the bottom to show for different routers for examples. I'll see if I can add a link for that. And then once we actually have the server set up for your firewall and your router, we can actually go and click on a shortcut we made. As I said, once you have this all down and installed, you don't actually need to have your Steam account anymore. You're going to see that it's going to pop up with local console. Um, SpaceTime is currently one of the other servers I set up on, other, on the other separate PC. But in this case, we're going to say add new instance. I'm going to call it Space Ain't It. We're going to then continue the server configurations. From here, we can actually, I'm going to set up as a new game, we can then set up any type of scenario we want. So Red Ship, I'm going to go with Star System because I quite enjoy it. We're going to go and then change the actual server name and world name. You can make these anything you want. You can also set a password to the server if you don't want certain people joining or if it's just going to be a private one for you and your friends. Another reason why I say running it off a laptop besides a desktop, if you just want something easy and cheap to use, is that you're not chowing a whole bunch of electricity in your house. Like if you have a 45 watt charger for your laptop, it's not going to go and chow a whole bunch. It's going to be a lot cheaper to run in the meantime. You can also set the server description. You can have your plugins. You can then have your tr uh, the trash removal, such as items like let's say if you get too far and they un under render or stop rendering or they're out of render zone. You can have your multipliers, your friends, or your players. You can set your max players here, so you can set it up to like let's say 10 just to be safe, or four depending on the PC you're using. As I said, it's kind of not very fluent on what's actually will work. I'll just say if you have a laptop lying around at home, just go and grab it, throw it on there, give it a try. You never know. In this case, now we're going to say save, because I'm happy with that. We're going to say save and run. Now, once that is running, you'll then see it start saying... Let me just check that it's not... Yeah, it's going to be running experimental mode. If everything runs fine, you'll see a game ready appear at the bottom. 
now that it's ready we can actually load up into the actual game and we should be able to see the server once I figured out how to do mods I will then help to see if I can assist you guys in installing them chances are we are going to need the an original account with the actual game to then download the mods and then we're probably gonna have to transfer them over into a mods file in the actual server section and then load them in through that once we're in the actual game we should just be able to say click join game wait for the servers and there is our actual server but as you can see we got this little thing it says here the server is in experimental mode as you can see pretty much every other server in the area is that so what we are going to do is we're going to jump down to options game and we're going to make sure this is on if we this is on just make sure it's solid that means we're in experimental mode that is what we need so now that the actual server is up and going we can then you actually see we only got a ping of one I know when it comes down to friends that join sometimes their ping is also very very low it will be like two three even though they're a few kilometers away from you like a completely different line so what whoop, yeah we're gonna then say we want to connect to it it's gonna load on the actual server side if you've got a screen attached you should actually see world request received and your actual steam account name and this is going to be a fairly large world I'm not expecting it to run very well because I'm running obviously an entire server and the game at the same time on my PC it may not be happy with me but this is why we set up a separate device for this type of thing it's probably going to take a while to load not as long as like if you're joining one from all the way in America or somewhere with 140 ping it's not very pleasant and as you saw there's not a lot of servers a lot of people tend to play this offline or they make their own servers and to what my knowledge is a lot of the old data the oldest server I could figure out was through a, a company that they rent out servers and those videos are around about three to four years old so I thought I'd make this video just to at least show people if they want to run their own stuff they can go crazy with it and do so because I know servers can be very expensive to rent and run as some of them can be like what's it 10, 20, 25 dollars depending on the actual requirements cool and we can actually I'm just gonna go with a earth-like drop pod I actually should be able to show okay no it actually won't show there we go and we actually loaded in on the server I'm just gonna fly around quickly as you can see it actually runs pretty well even though I'm running it on my actual PC and the game itself when you have a dedicated server it's gonna run a lot better when it comes down to the end of the day hopefully this helped you a little bit um, I actually want to show you what it looks like on this page uh, let's just quickly exit so you actually see this so it'll actually say you now it actually disconnected I reconnected it'll say game ready when it's actually going if you want to go and shut the reason why I didn't show is yeah actually I don't really know I just want to make sure there's nothing here so as you can see I'm currently running an i5 7th generation 3 gigahertz and it still puts me under forced experimental mode I haven't figured that out yet once I do it will be all fine another reason why we do it through the actual steam account is because once you uh, you can do it through the steam cmd but it just you're missing a lot of programs and functions that you actually have to download after the fact to actually get the server running so you will need some i'll be honest it's been a while and i can't really remember what they were but when you actually run in the server for the first time it'll actually then install them once they're installed you can quite literally yes it did run perfectly 
go to Steam and then just exit and then just leave your account empty because all you really need is you don't actually need your Steam account at the end of the day. You can just double click this. It won't log into Steam or anything. It'll just run the server straight ahead and you can then select which ones you and your friends want to join or if you want to go create a new one or basically anything you want to do. As long as you have the firewall sorted, you have then the port forwarding on your router setup, I would recommend probably jumping onto YouTube and just checking out one or two videos for your particular router. And then, yeah, just loading it up through Steam for the first time and hopefully that's all you pretty much need. There's not really much needed for to get a server started, but with the information that's currently around, it's not very friendly in a way. I You can read the documentations that the actual give you on the fandom and that, but it's not current enough and it's not very informative on the programs that you actually need to run the server. But thank you for listening to me and hopefully you guys can set up your own servers and enjoy the games. Go nuts with them, mod the crap out of them, and pretty much, yeah, build crazy contraptions and kill your friends. Anyways, thanks, Aid. Bye.